Hello and uh, welcome to the uh, virtual ICM uh, room two. Uh, my name is Vitek Gan from the National University of Singapore and I'll be chairing this uh, uh, session. Um, the talk this session will be coming from section three, number theory. Um, it is a pleasure to introduce Professor Singwen Zhu from the California Institute of Technology, Caltech, who will be delivering a talk titled The Arithmetic and Geometric Langlands Program. Professor Zhu is a is an expert in geometric representation theory, especially on the geometric aspects of the Langlands program with applications to number theory and mathematical physics. He obtained his PhD from the University of California, Berkeley in 2009 uh, under the supervision of Edward Franke. Subsequently, he did a postdoctoral position at Harvard before moving to his current position at Caltech. So without further ado, let's welcome Professor Drew to uh, deliver his talk, Arithmetic and Geometric Language Program. Thanks. So uh, my talk is about Arithmetic and Geometric Language Program. And here's a roadmap, relation between geometric and arithmetic language. So let's start with a brief review of uh, Arithmetic Language Program and then move to the geometric language and talk about their relations. Uh, one of the oldest subject, subjects in math is to solving Diophantine equations like this, or equation like this. And uh, to study such equation, one usually first uh, counts its solutions modulo prime. So then this gives us a function with primes being the variable, p go to ap, where ap is some number, more or less the number of mod p solutions of the Diophantine equations but not exactly. For example, in the first case, in this, for this equation, quadratic equation, usually people let AP equal to MP minus one. So this is number is in between minus one, zero and one. And uh, in the second e equation, which is cubic equation, two variable cubic equation, one usually let AP equals P minus MP. And uh, so this, one way to do, one reason to do that is so that its absolute value is uh, less than or equal to two square root of p. Okay, the function from p to ap is usually very mysterious and encodes deep arithmetic information of Diophantine equations. But uh, uh, how to study it? Well, this is studied by reciprocity laws it uh, roughly speaking, reciprocity law is another construction, different way to construct such a function, p to bp, such that ap and bp are the same for almost all p. Okay. So, for example, in the for this equation, quadratic equation, then Gauss reciprocity law gives bp equals p square mod phi, and the, you know you consider number, square of a number, mod five, it can always be arranged to be minus one, zero, or one. And then the claim is AP equals BP for almost all P. So if you look, just look at the AP and the BP, their definitions are both given by congruence, but the, they have very different nature. For example, from this expression, BP, you see if P and the Q are two primes, which are the same mod five, then A BP and BQ are the same. But this is not obvious at all using the definition of AP given in this way. So a priori, this has nothing to do with the prime of phi. So this is uh, uh, one example of the quadratic reciprocity law. Yeah. And the, the second for cubic equation like this, this reciprocity law is, looks very strange at the beginning. Actually, it says like AP, which can be given by BP, where BP are the coefficient of Q to the P in this power series with variable Q. This, you write on such power series and consider its Q expansion and take the coefficient in front of uh, uh, P to the Q, uh, Q to the P, then you get the AP. So for example, a2 is minus two, A3 is minus one, A5 is one, like A of uh, uh, 10,007 is 18. 
and so forth. Okay, so uh, the Langlands program, which has been discussed uh, in several talks in this conference, is, uh, is a system systematic way to study reciprocity laws. A particular case known as a Taniyama Shimura way conjecture actually implies Fermat's last theorem, which has been talked in uh, Frank Carragher's talk. So very roughly speaking, uh, the Langlands program predicts that uh, for a connected reductive group over Q, there is a correspondence between two sets. I emphasize original Langlands program is a bijection between two sets. One is a set of automorphic representations, and one is a set of Langlands parameters. And the re reciprocity laws connect them. But uh, this is not uh, just an arbitrary bijection. They must satisfy in certain conditions, namely this bijection should match in the spectral data arising from the automorphic side and the arithmetic data arising from the uh, this long set of non parameters. And that this data can be actually related by the so-called Satake isomorphism. For example, in the previous examples, the, the quadratic equation G is G01 and the, this cubic equation G is G02, then the collection AP is all our arithmetic data and the BP are spectral data. So in the next few slides, I will briefly review each term, like each, what are the meaning of each term in the box. So let's start with automorphic representations. They are actually automorphic forms are certain functions on this GR mark gamma, where G is the connecting reductive group, such as matrix group. And the gamma is a congruent subgroup, which is kind of special, uh, discrete subgroup in G of R, which has some arithmetic meaning. For example, this FQ we talked about before, the, is actually an example, because actually that exp expansion, power series expansion, gives the rest a well-defined function on this hyperbolic disk, and uh, uh, it's actually an example of automorphic form, actually it's a modular form, in the sense it's actually uh, a function on this GR, as now this G is SL2R, basically two by two, two invertible metrics with determine one modulo this uh, group gamma, which is this discrete subgroup. And uh, see this group is defined by congruence conditions. And that's the reason they call it congruence subgroups. So this quotient space, GR mod gamma, usually is a manifold. It's acted by a uh, GR by right translation, because I'm coaching out the left gamma from the left, so there's a right action of GR on it. But uh, there's also some hidden symmetry, the so-called the heck correspondence of this space rising from the left action quotient. It's given by as follows, for an element in the group, you can consider this correspondence. Okay, so it's a, some space in the bit between map to uh, GR mod gamma with two maps to GR mod gamma. Okay, so uh, this right translation and this heck operators, they act on the space, so they act on the space of functions on it, and they you do this, combining this action, this gives the automorphic forms and the automorphic, uh, the so-called automorphic representations. So uh, for, arith for arithmetic in applications, the important, very important part is the heck action, and the, the, all the heck operators can be uh, organized into heck algebras, which admits a, like a tensor product, a factorization as a tensor product, labeled by primes for almost p. For almost p, this h is actually hp is a commutative algebra. For example, for g is g two, uh, you just consider in this you 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 have this particular operator called TP operator. It's given by this correspondence induced by this particular element diagonal matrix P1 uh, here. You, you see the gamma here with gamma P diagonal matrix P1. And then uh, the Heck algebra actually one can show explicitly the HP is a, uh, is a commutative algebra generated by this operator and another invertible operator called SP, which we do not, uh, it's not less important here. Uh, 
So then spectral data arises by simultaneously diagonalizing the actions of these commuting operators. Uh, in the example above, the coefficient BP are actually the eigenvalues of TP operators, which acts on FQ. Okay, uh, I explain the left vertical side of the previous commuted diagram. So let's talk about the right-hand side. Uh, a long lens parameter actually is uh, roughly speaking, okay, there's different way to understand long lens parameter, but for our purpose, we think about this, a continuous homomorphism from the absolute Galois group of Q to G hat E, where G hat is a long lens dual group of G and the E is some topological field. So this is topological group. So here, this, I should see one of the very fascinating aspect of the long lens group, uh, long lens program is actually on the two sides, there are different groups appearing. One is G and one is G do, but the, because of the time, we don't have uh, we don't have time to talk about that. So uh, we just talk about uh, some example. Uh, it's a, it's a, it, uh, just one particular example. If G is GON, this is actually just the GON as well. But in general, it's different. For example, G, if G is SO2, this action is SO3. In any case, the arithmetic data is such a homomorphism, but the, in the elementary number theory, told us like the, the, there are some distinguished conjugacy classes in the absolute Galois group given by the Frobenius conjugacy class. So for each prime P. So in particular homomorphism will give uh, conjugacy classes of the G in the long lens dual group. In the particular case, if G is GON, then G hat is a GON as well, as I just mentioned. Then we know that the conjugacy classes of GON are uh, metrics are basically determined by the, the, the trace more, more or less. And uh, so I can, instead of consider such a conjugacy class, I can con just consider function sending a P to the trace of this conjugacy class. That's exactly uh, the spectral data we talk about, uh, the, the, the arithmetic data we talked about before is AP. In particular, for this cubic equation actually, this is elliptic curve and its Tate module is a two-dimensional Galois representation and AP is just a trace of the Frobenius acting on the Tate module. Okay, so uh, now uh, let's consider the talk about the Satake isomorphism, which is uh, relating, uh, relating the bottom to uh, the bottom line of the previous community diagram. The Satake isomorphism is basically says that uh, relates actually to G and G do G hat. The relation is actually, if you consider the G hat conjugate invariant functions on G hat, then this is canonically isomorphic, the Heck algebra HP for almost all P. Okay, remember we say this is commutative algebra. And this is also commutative algebra. So in the previous example, Recall we see this HP is basically commuted with algebra generated by two elements. One is TP and another is SP, which is invertible. Here, in this case, G hat is GO2, and we know all the conjugate invariant functions on two by two metrics are given by two, uh, are generated by two particular functions. One is a trace, another is a determinant but because my metrics are invertible, determinants are invertible. And then the Satake isomorphism actually sends TP exactly to this trace function and the SP to determinant. So uh, because of this isomorphism, one can relate to arithmetic data with spectral data because spectral data arises as a spectrum of Heck algebra. And uh, we just explained that the conjugate class of G hat, then uh, arithmetic data are basically a conjugate class of G hand, which can be for the spectrum of uh, this uh, of conjugate invariant functions on G hat. Okay, so this is a very brief and uh, quick uh, review of the classical long lens correspondence. Uh, now let's move to the geometric side. The geometric long lens program was 
actually invented uh, much later in 1980s by Dreamfield and Lamont as a, a continuation of Dreamfield's proof of so London's correspondence for GO2 over global function fields. So its de development follows from uh, the path as outlined by Weiss Rosetta Stone in mathematics goes from number fields to global function fields and the, the Riemann surfaces. And the, here's a, some pr uh, concrete and the di uh, explicit dictionary. So uh, the left hand side is very arithmetic and the right hand side are very geometric. So here you have talk about the prime numbers, then correspond to points on Riemann surfaces, Galois representations, respond to local systems or uh, or sometimes people uh, under Riemann, so-called Riemann Hilbert correspondence correspond to the uh, differential equations on, on Riemann surface. This automorphic space GR mark gamma actually correspond to the modulized space of bundles on the Riemann surface, we call bang G, moduli of G bundles. Uh, with zeta functions correspond to cohomology and uh, so Riemann hypothesis really are related to the so-called Hodge theory. So this is very arithmetic and it's very geometric and they are related by in the middle by the so, uh, by so-called function fields, which has share both arithmetic and the geometric uh, characteristics. Okay, so because of time, let's ignore the middle column. So in any case, under this, the, the uh, so under this dictionary, actually the geometric Langlands reciprocity predicts that for Riemann surface uh, sigma, which basically corresponds to the number fields, then uh, the correspondence is like linear PDEs over bound G correspond to ODEs on sigma with G hat structure. One should think about this is because uh, bound G is like uh, G R ma gamma, so linear PDEs on, over it uh, should be thought about the uh, analog of uh, uh, automorphic representations. And uh, this set is, uh, we talk about London uh, ODEs correspond to Galois representations. So this set should be thought about for the uh, uh, geometric London's parameters. So we won't, let's not talk about the, uh, the concrete meaning because it's very involved. Instead, let's give a concrete example. So we consider case G is G2 and the, the Riemann surface is uh, just P1 minus two points, zero and infinity. Because I mean, if we do want to have some non-trivial local system on Riemann surface, it should have non-trivial fundamental group. And this is the simplest example. Uh, but actually in this case, we need, we need to talk about more than just the fundamental group, but so-called wild ramification. Anyway, so uh, this uh, example is as follows. So a function phi satisfying the so-called the basal differential equation. This is basically actually the geometric analog of uh, this uh, arithmetic data sending P to AP. So now P, recall P in this previous uh, dictionary, P corresponds points on my surface. So this is a kind of function. This is this should be a function on the Riemann surface, that's phi. And uh, this function arises as a Galois representation, basically says this, uh, uh, the analog of that is the phi satisfying certain differential equation. And then uh, on the spectral side is actually, is, this is this function, this function has some particular, has some integral solution, right? Oscillatory integrals. So this is the analog of P equal to BP. So, uh, and the such correspondence actually has many applications in mathematical physics, such as uh, Gordon models or mirror symmetry, so on and so forth. So uh, some people, people might heard that geometric numbers is highly abstract categorical subject, but uh, in this basic form, it's actually gives you a recipe to try to solve certain ODEs by integral, so find the integral solutions for ODEs. And this is actually very concrete. Okay, but uh, as I just mentioned, the geometric Langlands 
divert diverges from the origin uh, is nowadays very abstract. And actually, it diverges from the original arithmetic version quite a bit for a long time. And it's related to physics. And the basic idea is that you replace numbers by vector space to categories and to two categories. This procedure is known as uh, categorification or geometrization. Okay. And the, but the, recently, actually, the geometrical elements also can find the a relation to the original arithmetic version. And the, it relies on uh, a procedure going backwards from categories, two categories to categories, to vector space, to numbers. And this procedure is basically inspired by the, uh, like quantum field theory, by right? evaluating TQFT at manifolds of different dimensions. So I should say this procedure is quite familiar in geometry and topology has been used a lot, but, uh, but uh, it really can be also used in arithmetic content is, uh, is something uh, pretty recent. Okay, so let's talk about uh, how this procedure goes uh, from numbers to categories and so on so forth. And the starting point is the so-called the geometric Satake equivalence, which is a categorification of the so-called Satake isomorphism. Remember Satake isomorphism is really important even to formulate the classical long lens correspondence. So actually the geometric Satake is also needed even to formulate the geometric uh, long lens precisely. So uh, I should uh, so it's actually involved the uh, uh, reductive group G over local field. In the case when the local field is uh, uh, is an equal characteristic local field, such this this then geometric attack is start from the work of Lustig in 1980s, and some idea of Dreamfield, Ginsberg, and then finally uh, finished by uh, work of Merkovich of Pelona. For uh, lo when the local field is over QP, which is more rele relevant to arithmetic applications, this was uh, established by myself a few years ago. Okay, uh, so I mean, the, the formulation of the geometric attack is kind of complicated, but uh, let me give a non-traditional formulation, which uh, in some expect might be simpler for some people, but might be more abstract for another group of people. Anyway, for simplicity, I will only state this for G is G O N over a local field, because we actually never talk about the other group. So let's let K denote the residue field of F and let mode K to be the so-called the Tanakin category of growth and numerical motifs over K Actually, uh, K now K is actually a finite field, uh, so it's, there's a well-defined uh, Tanakin category for numerical motives. And then the geometric Satake can be uh, formulated, seeing that there's a natural faithful symmetric monodal functor from the category of represent algebraic representation of G hat to the category of uh, uh, this category of motives. So now G is a GON, so G hat, as we mentioned before, is just the GON. So we consider this category of representation of GON, and there's a functor from it to category motives. It sends the ith wedge, ith wedge of the standard representation of GON to uh, the uh, motive represented by the uh, Grassmannian of I planes in an N space. So this is a just classical Grassmannian of I planes in N space. So, so uh, how to understand this isomorphism? Uh, well, one way to understand it is you notice actually the cohomology of this Grassmannian of I space in N plane, uh, I, I planes in N space, the cohomology is abstractly as vector space can be written as I wedge of uh, Q to the n, QL to bar to the n. So it's this is like the standard representation, standard representation of GON, and then you take its ice wedge. That's correspond. It's exactly the cohomology of this uh, Grassmannian. Okay, so uh, I ignore this uh, 
another two remarks. But the, another way to understand this theorem, like this functor, by the way, I just say this is a faithful functor, not the fully faithful, because there are actually more morphisms here than here. But the, the important thing is the symmetric monoidal functor. So from here, you see that the one can, we can understand this uh, geometric sataki also in this way. Let's consider G is G02. Okay, then the standard representation, just a two dimensional standard representation with G02, two dimensional. Then you can consider its dimension, which is two, but uh, you can, I can write this dimension in the following way. I first uh, has this co-evaluation map. You know, if you choose the basis E1, E2, and the two basis delta one, delta two, then this, this map sends one to E1 tensor delta one plus E2 tensor delta two. And then there's a natural pairing from a vector space tensor it's due to uh, Q uh, to the scalar field. This is so-called evaluation map. And then you compose this. This is given by just multiplication by two. But the, if there's a, the geometric syntaxis, there's a functor sending this diagram to the corresponding diagram in the category motives. And it's given, then Q is just, uh, as we just said, it's, it's just a zero switch representation. So it sends to cross manual zero planes in two dimensional space. So that's a, just a point. It go to group one, two, times square one to actually, uh, here there's a, I mean, actually it's better actually here to consider maybe SO, uh, PGO2, uh, sorry, SO2. So then they're basically become the same. Uh, so then this co-evaluation map and the evaluation map are actually given by just the, in the category motives maps between motives are given varieties are given by correspondence, correspondences, and these correspondences are exactly given by the diagonal point. Go to the diagonal, group one, two, and group one, two. So this composition, then it becomes just the self-intersection of the diagonal, which is nothing but the Euler characteristic of, uh, of uh, this variety. So this variety is just P1, and then the Euler characteristic is just uh, uh, two. Okay, so these two numbers matches, and this also gives the uh, example, what, give uh, evidence of this, I mean, consistent of the theorem, and also give you a, some feeling that how a categorical statement like equivalence ca of categories can be used to, to prove like equality between two numbers. This is a, a procedure of taking trace. Okay, uh, we don't have time to talk much about it, but I hope this at least gave you some feeling. Okay, so uh, actually using this kind of idea, Winston LaForge uh, completely solved one direction of the global nonlinear correspondence uh, over global function fields. So those fields in the middle of this uh, middle column of uh, Louis Rosetta stone. So, uh, I mean, original, as I mentioned before, there's, a, I mentioned such diagram before, original, we hope there's a bijection, but a for proof the one direction. Uh, but of course, we want, also wanna apply such ideas, not just in the, to the left of column, which has really something to do, something to do with arithmetic. And actually, it, it does have applications to arithmetic numbers over number field. But over number fields, we, so far we can't get the, uh, results as strong as over function fields. There's a, a lot of uh, uh, difficulties to overcome. And uh, yeah, but uh, we still could do something. So uh, here, this involves the cohomology of Shimura varieties. Shimura varieties are uh, some kind of important algebraic varieties defined over number fields whose cohomology group should realize a large part of the Langlands correspondence, namely the cohomology group should be acted by both the Heck operators and the uh, Galois group. So uh, under consider the commuting action of the Heck operators and the Galois group 
the cohomology should realize non-lens correspondence. Uh, and the, now the theorem proved by Neang Xiang and myself says that if you are given two Shimura varieties, attaching to two reductive groups G and G prime, which are finitely trivial, extended pure inner form of each other. These are technical terms, but roughly speaking, they will have the same non non dual group and therefore the same set of non parameters. Now under certain mild assumption on the center of G and G prime, there's a, there are canonically defined heck aggregate maps between the compact compactly supported cohomology of their Ma P fibers for almost all P as, as predicted by the long lens correspondence. I just mentioned that G and the G prime will have the same long lens group, a do group and therefore the same set of long lens parameters. This in particular should imply there's a relation between the automorphic representations of G and the automorphic representations of G prime. Uh, Usually such a uh, uh, relation is usually called the jacke langlands correspondence. And uh, uh, the original construction of the jacke langlands correspondence is using the trace formula. But uh, this using cohomology Shimura variety, there's some geometric way to realize uh, jacke langlands correspondence. This actually, this idea actually was or originally due to Rippert and, Rippert and the Sear in the case of GO2 in probably 1980s, but, uh, but this theorem could be thought of as a vast generalization. But uh, I should mention there's a lot of works in between, so uh, uh, we don't have time to talk all of them. Actually, this theorem also implies, the, so gives the so-called Tate conjecture of the generic part of the uh, homology of multi fiber of Shimura varieties. So, uh, here, one let let's say this Shimura variety, and for G prime, one take a, it to be a group whose a reductive group whose R point is compact, or maybe compact modular center. And in this situation, this real uh, uh, such map actually are provided by the so-called Tate cycles on the MAP fibers of Shimura varieties. In particular, verify the generic part of the homology of multi fiber of Shimura varieties. It also gives a, a so-called the congruence relation conjecture or original called Eklar Shimura relation in the general form uh, conjectured by Blasio Rogowski. Uh, I should say uh, in the case for the Arbinian type situation this such thing has not been written, completely written down yet, but at least for Hodge type, it's already written down by uh, uh, Wu, uh, Zhi Yu. Yeah, Zhi Yu already wrote down, at least for Hodge type. But uh, this last application actually used the case G is actually equals G prime and uh, we have the same Shimura variety. So, okay. So it's not, it's not about jumping King Longlands, but really has some, uh, has some other applications is there beyond the Jackie Longlands. Okay, so uh, we should, uh, there's another application is of the previous theorem, which is uh, we have in our joint work with uh, Yi Feng Liu, Yi Chao Tian, Liang Xiao, Wei Zhang, and myself, we prove certain, uh, certain cases of Bennison block Kato conjecture for certain ranking Silberg motives, which is a vast generalization of the so-called BSD conjecture. Uh, the general theorem we proved is quite complicated state. So let me give a concrete application. Suppose A1 and A2 are two modular elliptic curves over a totally real field, F. And we assume, for some places, we assume F is not Q. And let E over F to denote same extension. Suppose there are these two module, two elliptic curves are not isogenous over Q bar and uh, not the same elliptic curves. Then the non-vanishing of the ranking silver L function. Oh, so this is like a G O two times G O three L function. So the I, block Kato conjecture actually predicts the, the vanishing order of this uh, uh, 
of the L function and the central value is related to uh, the rank of the uh, blue Hokkaido similar group. And our theorem actually says, we verify this in, a, in this particular case, is if the order is zero, actually the rank of the similar group is also zero. Okay, uh, the, one of the basic ideas is to uh, study the relevant uh, similar group by unitary Shimura variety and the Tate cycles on this Shimura variety. So this is how this uh, work of Shao and myself is used in here. There are many other ingredients, but let me just talk about one is the so-called the gangros Persa conjecture. Okay. Uh, so in the remaining basically like 10 minutes, let me talk about some recent conjectures in arithmetic long lens. This consists of a conjecture, the, some con strong form of some local long lens correspondent, and a conjecture formula for the cohomology of Shimura varieties, actually the module of Stukas. So let's start from, uh, these conjectures are actually very much uh, inspired by the so-called categorical form of the geometrical long lens correspondence, which roughly speaking predicts an equivalence of infinity categories on the, uh, as follows, on the right hand side, it's uh, uh, here's a lock G hat, it's a module of ODs on Riemann surface. So it's kind of the space of long lens parameters, and we consider the coherence shift on it. On the automorphic side, instead of consider Previously, we talked about the geometrical long lens is like linear PDEs on uh, bang G, but now we put them together and consider category D modules on bang G with certain finance property. So uh, this is a kind of a, a so-called rough form of a categorical geometrical long lens. It was originally conjectured by Lamont and uh, Benison and Trinfield in some kind of very imprecise way. And, and the, the later on made precise by our ranking gates query. So the first step to formulate uh, our medic analog of this, uh, this correspondence would be to understand the, define appropriate categories uh, in, in arithmetic content in particular, we need to talk about the uh, log G hat in arithmetic content. So here's the theorem. So let G be a connected reductive group over a local field of characteristic P or a global function field over FP. And let L be a prime different from P. Then there exists an algebraic stack over ZL whose points classify arithmetic non parameters. So, uh, so therefore we do have a natural moduli space lock in the arith arithmetic content. In the local case, actually this stack was also con constructed by uh, Frags and Schalter and uh, that Helm, Kroon, Zig, Moss by different methods. Uh, some, sometimes similar, but sometimes different. Uh, in the case of L equals P, actually there's also this Moduli space of arithmetic, arithmetic long lens parameter, arithmetic local long lens parameter. This was, this is the, so nowadays they are actually called the Emerton G stack. The number field is actually more complicated because the local L equals P case is already very complicated. And the, this, the number field case has actually is turned under investigation by uh, uh, Emerton G and myself. <coughs> So once we have such moduli space, then one can talk about the category of coherent shifts on it. So that gives us the right-hand side of this correspondence. How about the left-hand side? Well, so we need some uh, category, which is category, which is category of L lot shifts on BG, where G is, G is the local field over F and BG is the, cut, the so-called cut width set needs to be understood as some geometrical object. So uh, actually there are two ways to do it nowadays. There are pro 
possibly equivalent, but uh, it's not known yet. One way is uh, by the category of shifts on the modular FG bundles on the Fox Fontaine curve. This is approached by uh, Fox and Schultz. So in this project, like this BG is really like the bang G, but for cert certain very uh, 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 kind of uh, uh, weird curve, this is called the Fox Fontaine curve. So another way to define such categories by the Frobenius conjugate equivalent shifts on loop groups. So this is what actually implicit already in the work of Chinastia Lafourque, uh, and also my work of Liang Xiao. And uh, uh, with Tamir Himmel, we actually uh, had a, have, have a very detailed study of this category in this approach. This approach is more, uh, you know, related, uh, more in, in the realm of classical geometrical representation theory. Okay, so uh, anyway, in both versions, this category contains the representation of GF the category of a smooth representation of GF as a full subcategory. And actually this category are glued by uh, different representation categories uh, for groups related to G. So uh, now let's, we can uh, start it, uh, state the theorem, uh, sorry, the conjecture. If F is a non-Archimedean local field, we consider the stack of local com uh, parameters. Then there's a conjectural equivalence of categories on the coherent shifts on log and the shifts on BG, L-log shifts on BG. Uh, I should have mentioned Frax Schotter made the same conjecture, but of course with uh, this category understood in their way. But let's talk about some uh, evidence of this conjecture. So we, on the category, on this moduli of uh, local lens parameters, there's a so-called unipotent moduli of unipotent parameter and moduli of unramified parameters. These are representations uh, factored through uh, unramified Galois group and this representation factored through the tame Galois group, but with the uh, tame monodromy unipotent. So uh, in, uh, in the work, of Liang Xiao and myself, we construct a, a functor from the coherent shifts on this unramified uh, lens parameters to this category. This, this functor compatible with geometric subtake. And actually this theorem is responsible for the previous mentioned the results between like this uh, 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 transfer between cohomology of Shimura varieties. And then it also makes the following vast generalization. It says actually this uh, functor from the Actually, equivalence of categories from the category coherent shifts on unipotent part of the local uh, lens parameter to a certain unipotent part of this uh, category of shifts, which roughly speaking is glued by a uh, uni category of unipotent representations for different uh, for those uh, G and its related forms. Okay, so finally, let me talk about the cohomology of some con global conjecture. So I consider cohomology of Shimura varieties. For, for a representation of G hat, this gives a vector bundle on the stack of global parameters. So I remind you for in the number of global number of field cases, this stack is still under, uh, under con uh, construction, and, but it's okay because we are in any case state conjectures. So the, the claim is actually for, then the conjecture is for a level K, for each local place, when obtain some coherent shift on the local stack by the previous uh, uh, equivalence. And then by shriek pullback, this local coherent shifts pull back to a coherent shift on the global stack. And then the conjecture is the cohomology of Shimura variety uh, should be expressed as a coherent cohomology of the, some coherent shift on this modular stack. Uh, compatible with the Galois action and the Heck action. So uh, again, this conjecture is currently, I mean, will be made it make it precise with Amit and G. Okay, uh, thank you very much.
Okay, uh, thank you very much, uh, Professor Zhu, for a very uh, fascinating talk. And uh, this, will, this uh, concludes our, um, this afternoon's session in the virtual ICM room two. So thank you for joining us today and uh, enjoy the rest of the Sunday. Okay, see you.